Hi everyone, Mike McConville here again, Stratford, Ontario, Canada. The guitar industry has really changed it up, you know, over the last few decades, uh, you know, with, with dozens of different ways to attach neck to a body. But you still need to understand the traditional dovetail, and this is the mother of all dovetails. This is the HD 2850th anniversary. We're doing a complete uh, neck reset on that. Uh, as you saw earlier, I had steamed the dovetail off with that jig that I put together. But I want to walk you through step by step just how involved it is to do this job. There's a reason that this is a big ticket job. You can count on spending an entire day just finessing that neck joint because we're changing the geometry drastically when you do this. When you do it right, methodically, step by step, it will have exactly the same amount of integrity as when the guitar was made. So let me walk you through a couple of steps here. So first thing I'm checking here is I've got a straight edge up against the slot of the first string and it's going to the first string peg hole. I've got a piece of masking tape on there. I'm just going to scribe a pencil line on there and then I'm going to move over to the other side. Same deal for the sixth string. I'm going from the sixth string nut slot to the center of the bridge pin hole for the sixth string. I will scribe another line here on the mask. Okay, we're bringing you in nice and tight here. Here is the trajectory of the first string. Here's the trajectory of the sixth string. That's good. We've got the same distance. We've got equidistance from the outside of the fingerboard to the center of the string on both sides. Four millimeters and four millimeters. So you can see now this fingerboard extension has a little bit of flex in it. It's kind of flipping up a little bit. Well, we got to deal with that. That's part of the neck to body junction geometry. So after pulling that neck off and then changing the angle like this, well, that means that the geometry on the cheek of the heel, the inside of the heel, and the geometry on the tip has changed. It's tilted back. So the fingerboard extension now needs to flex down to make 100% contact to the soundboard surface like when the guitar was made. So what I've done and what I always do is I make an undercut here at the top of the dovetail to give that enough flex and relief so that we can get 100% contact on the underside of the fingerboard extension, both sides of the dovetail and the soundboard surface. On the dry run, like you saw me do in that 1920s Hensel guitar, I actually put a couple of strips of two-sided tape and then I'll work that neck to body junction where we have that sort of hump. To do this job properly, we need to true up the fingerboard right from the nut Right. right past that neck to body junction where you have that sort of bump now that we've tilted the neck back. Okay, we've got three strips of double sided tape. We're going to push that dovetail into place. I have uh, just a couple of thin pieces of masking tape on either side of that dovetail just to give me a, a solid fit. Now when we glue the neck on, this, this is another argument for hide glue. We mix the hide glue up so that it has enough viscosity or thickness to fill any gaps. The fingerboard extension will also be done with hide glue in this instance. So what I've got here is a radius piece of hockey puck. I'm putting another piece of hockey puck up against the head brace and this will give us what we need to pull that fingerboard extension in tight. Just for good measure, I've got another piece of hockey puck on the underside of the back and we're going to pull this in tight and as well. Here's a real close look. I've got a light on that so you can kind of see just how accurate that fit is. The fingerboard extension, this is the treble side. I'm going to this is the kind of fit we're aiming for. This side two, this is what we're after. Just kind of clean that dust off of there. Okay. Okay, so let's take a close-up look at this neck set so I can explain this a little bit further. So when I put that straight edge on there now and I kind of slip up to the bridge, you can see I'm still butting into the bridge here. But, you got to remember we're putting frets on there. So, 
between correcting the trajectory of the fingerboard and getting rid of this sort of neck to body hump, you can see the, see the light through here. That's how much I've set the neck back. So we got to divide that up between truing up the neck end to end, respecting that radius, and then putting the new frets in. And then when those new frets go in and we set that straight edge on, it'll just kiss the top of that bridge. And it could even come up a little tiny bit higher, which will give us tons of real estate for years to come as far as adjusting the action goes. Mm -hmm. I am removing the nut because we're going to be putting compensated nut on, of course. So I've and got that nut confined between two tongue depressors so that as I split it in half there's zero chance of scoring the headstock or the fingerboard. So this is how I'm holding the guitar on the tech deck. The, uh, so the body is held down against the uh, double railed body platform. This strap here pulls the instrument in this direction. The other strap pulls it in an opposing direction and that holds it down and immobilizes it as we do our work. Uh, I've got both neck straps on here because we're just splitting uh, that nut in half before we heat it to remove it because we're going to be putting a compensated nut in there. You can see we've cut down to just a whisper above the glue line. Stopping to check as I go and that's it. We're ready to heat it up and ease that out. We'll just pull those protective tongue depressors off. Get the other one off. We're going to heat that up with the uh, hair dryer for about four minutes. Heated that up on the buffer and we're just going to score with a hot knife the lacquer across the leading edge of that nut. I'm also going to score on the end here. I'll come around the other side in a second. And this side, same deal. Nice and easy. Beautiful. Now we'll tap that towards the center line gently and break that, that glue joint. I'm just going to tap it this way before we pull it just to make sure we don't chip any lacquer. Okay, liking that. And now we'll ease it out. It's a beautiful thing.